What's up you guys, my name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about the PPP. Now the PPP opened on Monday for first draw applicants with local community banks and today on Wednesday it is opening for second draw applicants with local community banks as well. Which means that the applications are officially opened even if it's only opened for a small portion of the population. With that being said, today I want to walk you through how to apply for the PPP program if you're a first time applicant. We're gonna be going over the personal guarantee form as well as the application. I'm going to be walking you through how you can apply for this if you are an independent contractor, if you are a gig worker, or even if you have an LLC. That way, once the application process opens, you will know exactly what to expect, you will know how to apply, and you will be prepared. So, Let's get started. Now, a couple of days ago, I made a video talking about the forms and tax forms that you need in order to apply for the PPP. This is not what those are. Instead, these are the forms that you or a certified lender will need to fill out in order to apply for the PPP. Now, remember, whenever you're applying for the PPP, you have to apply through a certified banking institution. Oftentimes, you have to have a representative apply on your behalf, but if you use an online platform like Bluevine or Cabbage, for example, you could do it on your own online using their online portal. So let's first take a look at the very first form that I want to look at, which is the PPP borrower application. This is revised as of January 8th, 2021. And you can see here that the application is, I would say, pretty standard. So the first thing is you need to check which one of these you are. Are you a sole proprietor, a partnership, a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC? And again, this is for first time borrowers, meaning you have not borrowed under the PPP program yet yet. And so let's just say, for example, I'm going to click independent contractor. You can then put a DBA or a trade name. Now remember, a DBA is doing business as, and this is a name that your business goes by other than your LLC. If you are an independent contractor, you can just put your first name and last name. So for me, if I was filling out this application, I could just put Aubrey Janik. Next, you would want to do the year that you were established. So this is the year that you started doing business or the year that your LLC was formed. If you have a proper LLC formation, you would want to do the year that your LLC was formed. If you're an independent contractor and you do not have a proper LLC, then you would just simply do the date that you started working as an independent contractor or as a self-employed individual. For this example, I'll just put a random date, 2000. Next is the business legal name. So in this example, you would want to do your LLC name if you have an LLC. If you're an independent contractor, you could just do your own personal name. It really depends on you and your specific circumstance. But the LLC would be the legal entity name that your business is filed under. But if you are somebody who is an independent contractor, a self-employed individual, a gig worker, you would just want to do your own name. Again, for this example, I will just put my name, Aubrey Janik. This is the NAICS code, um, and this is basically like a code under which your business falls under, like what different industry your business is in. If you do not know what this is, I would just leave it blank. Um, you, you don't necessarily have to put a code there, but if you know what your code is or if you can easily search it, then definitely do that and, and put something there. Next is applicant, including affiliates if applicable, meets size standard. No more than 500 employees, SBA industry size standards, SBA alternative size standards. So I'll just click no more than 500 employees. Next is your business address. So you will want to put the name that either you live in or the name that your business is formed under. So again, if you're an independent contractor, if you're a self-employed individual, if you are a gig worker, you would just want to put your home address. I'll just put a random address. Next is your business TIN. And so that is your EIN number, your employee identification number, or your social security number. So if you are an LLC, if you have an LLC formed, then you would want to do your EIN. If you are a gig worker, an independent contractor, a self-employed individual, you would want to do your social security number. Next is your business phone number. You can also use just your cell phone number. I know a lot of people don't have a business phone number anymore. Next is primary contact. So here you will want to put who the primary contact for your business is. Again, if you're an independent contractor, if you're a gig worker, you just want to do yourself. Next is average monthly payroll. So this is how much you pay yourself from the business or how much you pay in payroll costs for the business. So for this example, I'll just put $1,000. And then once you have that number, in order to figure out what your total loan request would be, you would want to multiply this by 2.5 and then add any idle funds on top of that. Do not include any cash advances. 
So for me, I didn't get any idle loans. I did get a $1,000 cash advance. So I would want to multiply 1,000 by two and a half, that equals $2,500. And I wouldn't add anything for the idle because the only thing I received was the cash advance. So that means my total amount that I'm requesting in this example would be $2,500. And then the number of employees that I have would just be one because it's just me. Next is you need to figure out what the purpose of the loan will be. Are you gonna use this for payroll costs? Are you gonna use it for covered property damage, for rent or mortgage interest payments, utilities, covered operation expenditures? You would wanna click which one would apply to you and make sure that you are very accurate on where you plan on spending this money. And this is where if you're somebody who's applying for the PPP, I would encourage you to kind of know in advance what you're gonna use this money for. That way you can be as accurate as possible on these applications. So in my case, I'll just use the easy easiest kind of example for this one, and that is payroll costs. Next, we need to list all owners who own 20% or more equity in this business. Again, the example that I'm doing is me being an independent contractor, so I would just have me and myself, but if you have an LLC and you have partners that own more than 20%, then you would of course want to list them here. But for this example, I will just put myself. So next we have the question section. So we just have to go through and answer all of these questions as truthfully as possible. Is the applicant or any owner of applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by federal department of agency no has the applicant any owner or business control by any of items ever obtained a guaranteed loan that they are delinquent on no remember if you're delinquent on an sba loan this will disqualify you from the ppp the next question is basically does any owner of this business have ownership in any other business no Next is, did the applicant receive an SBA idle loan between January 31st and April 3rd? No. If the applicant or any individual owning 20% or more equity of the applicant presently incarcerated, a felony, an indictment, no. The next question is, within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, this is basically just saying, has anybody involved in your company been involved in these crimes? And in my case, it would be no. Basically, a good rule of thumb is if anybody who's associated with your business has a felony or is currently involved in a criminal charge of any kind, that most likely will disqualify you from the PPP. The next question is, is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees included the applicant's payroll calculation above? Yes. Is the applicant a franchise? No. Is the franchise listed in the SBA's franchise directory? No, because it's not a franchise. And then next, it just goes on by, by saying, by signing below, you make the following representations, authorizations, and certifications. And it's saying that you have read all of this, that you agree to all of this, that you abide by all of this, and you'll, of course, want to make sure to read that. And then lastly, it just says, for the applicants who are individuals, I authorize the SBA to request criminal record information about me from criminal justice agencies for the purpose of the authorized representative of the applicant must certify in good faith to all of the below initialing next to each one. The first one says the applicant was in operation as of February 15th, 2020. You would of course want to initial. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support ongoing operations. Yes. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll. It then goes on to talk about other forms and other ways that you can use these funds as well. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, etc. This is basically saying that you understand that in order to have this loan forgiven, you have to use it in the way in which the PPP outlines. And once you read that, and once you understand that, you would want to initial. Next is the applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program Section 7A of the Small Business Act. This does not include Paycheck Protection Program Second Draw Loans Section 7A37 of the Small Business Act. So this is basically saying that you will not take more money out. That is with the exception of the second draw, which of course we'll talk about in another video. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant from the SBA. If you don't know what this is, chances are it probably doesn't apply to you, but it applies to live venues that had to shut down down because of COVID-19. The president, the vice president, and the head of an executive department or a member of Congress or the spouse of such person as determined under the applicable common law does not directly or indirectly hold a controlling interest in the applicant. So basically saying you're not associated with anybody in government or anybody in power. That is correct. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are listed on an exchange registered as a national securities exchange under Section 6 of Securities Exchange Act. 
Yes. I further certify that the information provided in this application and its supporting documents is true. This is basically again just saying that what you're saying is true and accurate. And then lastly, I acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted. This is basically saying that the SBA will be fact checking your application and they will give you a eligible loan amount based on that information, not necessarily based on this application and this application alone. And then of course you will want to have your representative sign here print the name here, date, and then title. All right, so once you have your authorized representative sign, date, and add their title and their name, and then once you scroll down, it really just goes into detail of the different things that this form was requesting and why the form requested these, this information. So for example, it goes in to talk about how, like what is a sole proprietor, what is a partnership, what is the average monthly payroll cost, and why is this used in the application? So it really goes in to give you some more context. I would encourage you to read this, I think it's valuable, especially to give you some more insight into the exact kind of process of what goes into this application. And then whenever you scroll down all the way, it's gonna ask for a little bit more information from you. So it's gonna ask you the principal name, the position, and then also if that person is a veteran, their gender, their race and their ethnicity. So I would encourage you to disclose that. If you don't wanna disclose it, then just put X. But regardless, this is how you complete this application. Now this is just part one of applying for the PPP because that was the application, but another aspect of the PPP is a potential guarantee. And depending on how much money you request through the PPP program, you may have to give a personal guarantee. So the first piece of information is lender information. So here you would want to put the lender name address, contact information, basically the information pertaining to your lender. Now this is something that whoever you get the PPP funds through can help you with. I don't necessarily expect for you to know exactly the information that you need for the lender, but I would definitely recommend consulting whoever is helping you fill out the PPP in order to help you fill out this application. So then once you input your lender information, you'll want to scroll down and this will be applicant information. And this is pretty much redundant from what we just did with the application that we just filled out a few moments ago, you'll want to start off by selecting which business option applies to you in your business. Again, if you're an independent contractor, if you're a gig worker, if you're a 1099 worker, you would want to put either a self-employed individual, you could put an independent contractor, you could put a sole prop, depending on which option applied to you. Of course, if you have an LLC, you want to put whether it's an S Corp, a C Corp, an LLC, whatever the case is. Then underneath that, you'll wanna put applicant legal name. So this is the legal name of your business. If you have an LLC, it would want to be the LLC name. If you are a independent contractor, it would just be your name. So if I was applying as an independent contractor, as a Turo host, I would just simply put um, my personal name, Aubrey Janik there. Again, you have the option to do a NAICS code. If you don't know what that is, if you don't know how it applies to you, just skip it. Year of establishment, you would want to put whatever day you started doing business. If you have an LLC, it would be the date that your LLC was formed. If you're an independent contractor, it would be whenever you started doing work as an independent contractor. Next is your business tax ID. If you do not know what that is, if you do not have a business tax ID because you're not an LLC, then just ignore that and skip it. Next, you have your number of employees. If you're an independent contractor, a gig worker, you'll put one. You'll then reselect that your business adheres to SBA standards, so no more than 500 employees. You would then wanna do your street address. If you are a independent contractor, you do where you live. If you're an LLC, you'd wanna put your business address. And then your primary contact and your phone number. Then next is going to be the amount of loan that you're requesting. Now this was determined on that first application that we just filled out a few moments ago and you would just want to re-put in that number here. And then underneath that, it goes into the details of how this loan was determined. So your average monthly payroll multiplied by 2.5. Again, with the example that we did earlier, my monthly payroll could be $1,000 multiplied by two and a half months is $2,500. Underneath is refinance of eligible EIDL, economic injury disaster loans. So if you received an EIDL loan before, you do have the option to refinance that under the PPP, and that's what that's talking about here. And then you would add those two figures together to get the total amount. Next is the question of general eligibility. Now I won't go into all of these because it's quite a large paragraph, but I would encourage you to read that and to answer however is applicable to you. 
Next, we have the applicant certification of eligibility. The applicant has certified to the lender that the applicant is eligible under the Paycheck Protection Program. You would want to click true if that's true for you. Next is information about whether or not the business is a franchise. You would want to read this. Next is character determination. And this is similar to what we talked about earlier regarding lawsuits, criminal indictments, any felony charges regarding you or anybody that owns your business. If we scroll down even more, prior loss to government delinquent federal debt. This is again, similar to what we talked to earlier, which is if you have a SBA loan that you have been delinquent on, this will disqualify you from the PPP. So if you are somebody who has had a SBA loan in the past, this could apply to you. Next is US employees. This is just stating that the people who are working for the business, that the principal location for the business is in the US. Next is fees. Has the lender directly contracted with a third party to assist in the preparation of the loan application or application materials or to perform other services in connection with this loan. You would want to answer yes or no, depending on which option applies to you. And then next is the lender information. So you'd get a authorized lender signature, the name, and then the date, and then the title. And that is the last page of that guarantee form. So you guys, that covers, I would say, a pretty simplified overview of how to apply for the PPP if you're somebody who's wanting to apply for the first time. Now, again, this only applies to you if you're somebody who has never received PPP funds before, and this is your very first time requesting funds through the program. If you're somebody who has already received PPP funds and you're wanting to receive a second draw of PPP funds, then that application is going to be slightly different for you. And I will be doing a video on that tomorrow. Additionally, the PPP has not opened up to every single person. So if you are unable to apply for the PPP right now, even if you're a first time draw person, then don't worry because as of right now, only about 10 to 20% of applicants are able to apply due to the fact that local community banks are being prioritized. So I will be doing a video once the PPP opens to the general public. I will also be doing a video walking you through how to apply online on your own using services like Bluevine or Cabbage. So if you want to stay tuned for those videos, make sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it when it's dropped. With that being said, you guys, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.